All right, welcome back. We are now inside. We have our harvest, which we are working on um, getting prepared. I'll show you that real quick. <laughs> I didn't warn them I was coming over here. What we've done is we brought them in. We've given them all a good rinse and uh, got them tucked into uh, just a bowl of water. They're just going to float in the water until we're ready to work with them. They've all been rinsed off, get any bugs and, and any dust and bits out of them. Okay, we're coming back over here. And this is where we have some that were dried yesterday. If you look, you can see they're just really pretty orange. You can see some of the whole ones. They've already started processing these, so like there's a whole one. The Chinese actually call these golden needles. The petals of the daylily as they dry. You can kind of see why. Ours are, are orange and not yellow, but same kind of an idea. We're going to process these down after they dry the same way we do our all of our teas. These are actually being dried for tea right now. And all we do is run the dried herbs, flowers, leaves through a sieve. This has, does a couple of things. It breaks it down so you get a nice fine um, product that you can measure easily for one thing. Yeah. So it's easy to get a consistent measure. For us, one teaspoon of dried herb is real good with a cup of tea. Yeah. We'll use either six to eight ounces depending on the person drinking it and how strong they may want it. Right. Uh -huh. Because we have some people that it's never strong enough. <laughs> we have other never. people that would rather have another quarter cup of tea that's slightly less powerful. Yeah. We fill up just kind of a baby food jar, an old baby food jar, whatever, just until we have enough to measure. When we have enough to measure, as I said, a teaspoon works for us. We take our teaspoon and fill up our bag with dried products. This is what we've got in this last few days. We've been drying our daylily. We've discovered that if you add just a little dash of cinnamon, yeah. it really, it really brings out the sweetness. It enhances really it. Good. And it makes it really tasty. You can also put just a tiny bit of honey in it. Oh. Um, we try not to have sweetened Sweet. teas in general. We just, I personally prefer it. I prefer my iced tea and my herbal teas, all that stuff. I prefer it unsweetened. Mm -hmm. Back to our, hope I didn't make you dizzy there. Back to our, uh, processed section. Go ahead and get the heat going, honey. We're going to show you what we do with the rest of it. Try to get some, get the salad made. So what we're doing here with the salad is we've got our cleaned, our already cleaned petals, our already cleaned flower. And we're just plucking them off. You can chop them up if you want, but they're so pretty straight. And we're just putting together the salad. And what we'll put on top of that is just salt, pepper, garlic, and onion powder. And it's really, really tasty. It's just a nice salad. You can make a straight salad all on its own, but I have to warn you, you do not want to eat too much uncooked daylily straight or you will have tummy problems. Well, you could have tummy problems. I won't say you will have tummy problems. You could have tummy problems, and we don't need tummy problems. So you don't want to eat too many straight raw. Some people have a reaction to them, some people don't. So there's our salad. It's really tasty. Um, over here, we've got a skillet. A little bit of oil. A little bit of oil, or a lot of oil, depending on how you look at it. It's just a medium heat, medium high heat. We're going to go ahead and throw in some uh, minced garlic and all of our flower buds. And as you can see, we've got some that are going to open tomorrow really, really full. We've got some that will open in a couple of days. We have some really young ones they will quickly soften in the saute and become uh, very tender 
You can actually eat these raw. If you eat them raw, they, they don't have a lot of taste actually. They're crunchy. Look kind of like okra in the middle, how they're kind of hollow with the petal formation. But essentially, it's, it's more of a water chestnut flavor than anything. It's just kind of crunchy and not much of anything else. A little seedy. Yeah. But when you cook it, I think someone's already said, it becomes um, very asparagus-like. And it's really, really tasty. We're going to go ahead, as you saw, she put some salt and pepper on there. There's that little bit of garlic that's sauteing. Is it ready? Oh yeah. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and take that and pour it into the plate. So now you have your beautiful sautéed flower buds of the daylily, your beautiful salad with daylily leaves, petals, leaves, with daylily petals. And in a minute, we'll come back and we're actually going to process the daylily flowers. We're just going to trim them and we'll cook them up too and show you how they turned out. What do you think? Um. Good. Yum. It really is good. You mm -hmm. should try it. The buds are devoured. The salad is devoured. Besides a few little bacon bits that somebody decided to add at the last minute. Just for something different. <laughs> okay, the bacon bits will soon be gone. We have got here six flowers. We'll take the rest of our of our harvest here and we'll get it into the dehydrator shortly. So we're going to take these. We're going to use the same pan that we just did. It's going to have the... Um, we're not even adding extra oil. The leftover residual oil because somebody was oil heavy. Should be plenty. <laughs> Ooh, you. So we're going to go ahead and get our salt and pepper. And again, this is just a medium high heat. And we're just essentially wilting them. One thing I forgot to mention on the buds that I would have shown you if there were any left was the little stem end. You can leave that on the little part that attaches to the stem. You can leave it on. We uh, are also doing is we are saving some cooked buds. That looks pretty good, dear. We're saving the cooked buds. We're going to freeze them. And then as Daddy makes stir fries, we're going to use the buds in the stir fries. It's a really common, actually a fairly common ingredient in uh, China to cook with the buds like that. They're used in... Um, mushu pork and some different vegetarian dishes and again you just have that really nice asparagus flavor so why not it goes really well with stir fries you can stir fry them in when they're fresh oh we can't wait can we we can stir fry them in when we're fresh or we can stir fry them in after um, they are frozen later i think we'll probably have to uh, boil them lightly before we freeze them but we're going to play around with that and we can always let you know how that turned out so, how is it? Tastes like cooked red cabbage, and it looks like cooked red cabbage. Well, actually, it's interesting because I don't know if you can see, but on the plate, it has a, a the juice itself is almost Purple. purpley. It does, it definitely has that cabbage texture and, and really, I think, taste. Mm hmm. Good with garlic and onion. Oh, you've added extra texture garlic too. and onion, you like that too. Well, there's another serving suggestion sprinkle some garlic and onion while you stir fry it. Mmm, red. But really similar to uh, to cabbage. Okay, well that is our the end of our day day lily update on how we're harvesting it and some of the ways that we've you learned to use it. It really is tasty. Surprise yourself. Go outside and try your day lily. Don't forget, be a cloud watcher. Amen.